All right, this is the stock market, my review for the week. Uh, about, you know, every week I do something on the stock market, and sometimes I look at the S&P 500, sometimes I look at daily and weekly, uh, sometimes I look at all of the indexes. Uh, what I wanted to do today was show you the NASDAQ uh, on the intermediate time frame, really looking uh, at uh, the next uh, up to five months out. Uh, and I want to show you uh, the synchronicity that's in there uh, when you look at these five heavyweight stocks uh, that are in the NASDAQ. So uh, let's uh, start out by looking at the NASDAQ. I've got Apple up here, but I want to switch over to NDX. Here is the NASDAQ, and I want to show you what I'm going to look at and compare against uh, are these uh, five, uh, five of the ten uh, stocks right in here. So these are the 10 uh, top weights uh, as of today, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Google, Amazon, and Tesla. And I'm going to show you the analysis on that and how that relates to the analysis on the S&P 500. So let's talk, take a look right in here as to what we're looking at. And this, for those of you that are new, is cycle analysis. On the bottom are cycle brackets, which uh, help us as a guide. Uh, to the rhythms in the market, the money flows. And when you have a money flow that is moving up so strongly, and this is our momentum indicator, the reversal scout, and when it's moving up so strongly and you get to the bottom of a cycle and it only has a small time to correct, that's all it does. It comes down a small amount of time. This is called a positive configuration and right-hand translation. Just absolutely perfect uh, when you look at that in the NASDAQ. So you had a positive, positive cycle, positive cycle, and then you had a breakdown where it made the top. That's the key part of this analysis right now is that we really saw the bull market end right up over here when you had that engulfing pattern and then this evening star pattern that was giving the warnings and then you see that little red arrow that's where momentum began to turn down and that peak was made once it broke underneath this low it was what we call a negative configuration and this peaked on the left side of this big cycle right over here which means it's called a left-hand translation. When you get left-hand translations and then breakdowns, it tells you the conditions of the market and how weak it is. Normally, when you get this type of a shape, and by the way, that decline was down to down 22.3%, you get big rebounds, as you can see, but when it fails right in that resistance zone, that area that would be considered a sell zone, and then begins to move down and the momentum turns negative again, it shows you how bad it is. Again, it breaks down underneath that key low right over there. And then what that tells you is the market's in a lot of trouble. This is the minor cycle in here. Now, this has been, uh, the harmonics in here have been between 8 and 24 or 9 and 27. Right now we're looking at 9 and 27. This is uh, the minor cycles as you see them right in here. And the bottom forms right in here. This might have been a week later than we thought, down 32% as you can see right there. That is a, uh, an important uh, time frame. Now, our analysis that we've discussed for weeks and weeks was that we thought that there was going to be a rally that came on this minor cycle right over here that would come in May and into early June. Well, that's coming, and you can see this rally in here, even though it started a little bit later and maybe got a little bit deeper than we thought it would, we still have a condition of negative momentum that you can see right in there. So we're getting a rally. This is the major 23% off of the major top. That comes in right over here around 12740 uh, let's say. This next area here is 12,900. That would be the, the, right in here is about the lowest we would expect it to stop with a pretty good possibility it can get up to 13,558, which is that middle level right over there. We would expect that this would be able to rally into June and maybe rally into sometime even into late June if it wanted to do that before it then turned down. And when it turned down, it's likely to turn down in a very significant way. So what would be the target that we look for right over here? Well, 
uh, all of our uh, indexes are nested right in here, and that's between these two vertical lines is where the nested area is. Uh, and that's the time range is, is in, sync, in sync in all of the indexes sometime between early September, let's say, and October here. So we're looking for September, October as the low in the bear market. You can see in here what the downward trend looks like in this channel, and it's likely to get up here into this sell zone and then turn down again. So you would see that the rally time frame right in here is right in here. And you would get a rally into these areas here. It would then very likely fail and then move down sharply and very likely get below this level after that of 11,500. That's where that low was, down 32%. Now, this uh, that's the major 50% level that it got down to right there. And you could see it got some support. The next level right down over here is pretty likely, and that's at around 10,600. Uh, on the NASDAQ. That would be our target right now for this period. Uh, that is uh, in um, the, uh, we'll call it the late summer or fall uh, for the NASDAQ. So what I want to show you is the synchronicity in here, looking at the key five heavy, most heavyweight stocks. And you can get a good idea of that. Let's take a look in here of Apple. Uh, AAPL, and we're looking at weekly cycle analysis in here. And this is really cool because you can see that um, in each of these cycles, and we don't do this all the time, we put in target areas of where we thought the declines would come down to. So over here, we thought that the March target would be 115 to 118. Right over here is about 116, so it got very close. Here we thought the August-September target would be 137 to 140. That's this correction right over here. We got down to uh, just under 138, close to 137. So that was spot on. This, the March-April target, we thought would be 165 to 160. That was right, uh, uh, getting down right in here. But then we lowered it uh, to about 148. This low right over here was one, just under 150. So you can see how close those got. Now we have the September-October target between 130 and 138. It already got down over here to 132 in a fraction. This is the sell zone up right over here, and you can see it getting close to it. So we, we believe that the target right over here is at about 127 right now. Uh, again, we're targeting September, October. So this is in synchronicity with what we showed you on the NASDAQ. This right over here is um, uh, the showing the reversal scout, which is in negative condition. It's going to take some work to really turn that up, and I don't think that's going to happen. And again, the sell zone in here, 150 approximately to about 156. I would expect it to get there on the outside here is about 161. I doubt that. But uh, again, we think that this has a few weeks left to go. Uh, and then likely to turn down again. So that's uh, a little uh, more uh, involved look at the Apple price with a target now in the fall of uh, getting close to about 127 after it's already made our targets. Let's take a look at the other four stocks in here that make up the top five weighted. Here is Microsoft. You can see the exact same thing going on. Uh, that I just showed you in Apple, negative cycle, a breakdown, a, a projection out over here that takes you out down to about 240 out in the September, October time frame, getting up close to the sell zone right now, 273 up to about uh, 280 with an outside chance up here at 289. You see how fast it's getting up there. It actually hit the FIB target zone right here. Uh, and then likely to fail in here after a few weeks and then begin to move down very sharply. So that's a look at Microsoft. Uh, let's take a look at Google. Uh, Google actually uh, is in the third weighted position, but you have to add uh, the, the two symbols, G-O-O-G and G-O-O-G-L. This is very similar, as you can see. It comes down and nails that 161.8% Fib extension. There's another one down over here, the 162.8, which is way down here at close to $1,500, $1,520. Here's your sell zone right up over here, 2360 to about 
2460 so there's like a hundred dollar range in there it's still got quite a ways to go and we think a few more weeks again momentum in here is negative on that reversal scout you can see all of these positively configured cycles then once it broke down here under that level the top was made the head and shoulders top formed and now moving down very significantly as you can see there uh, and uh, just to take a little closer look right in here and you can see that projection down there potentially back down all the way to close to fifteen hundred dollars uh, sell zone well still got a ways to go maybe we can get some further rally on the upside amazon amzn uh, is the next uh, the fourth weighted stock almost identical you can see the sell zones in there it moves through that projection zone that we had right in there hits the 127 here's the 138 down there and if it wants to go to the 161 well that's the target range just under 2000 here and potentially down here to one uh six uh, to about 1650 uh, if it's able to keep the rally going now this is the 23.6 you can see that Amazon is actually weaker than some of the other ones I'm showing you. It could stop at around 2350 and then right over here is 2550. So those are the levels we think it'll get up to, but then again, rolling over and getting hit very hard again after that. Give you some sense about uh, this uh, bear market and uh, where the this leg or this leg of this major downside move where it's likely to stop. Here is the Tesla market, um, a major top likely formed in there based on the fact that this cycle right over here gave up about 90% there. It rallied all the way up here to the 78.6 and then broke that low. Hits almost the bottom perfect of that target zone, which is the 100% fit extension. Here's your rally level right over here, around, 80, uh, around 820 to about 880. Uh, that's what we would expect as a potential in here over these next few weeks. Uh, and then moving down again sharply. Our target down over here is at around under $500, maybe $464. And uh, I'm sure there are people just gasping at the thought of that happening. Uh, but uh, this is a really bad pattern. Again, momentum in here, very negative, as you could see, and uh, very susceptible to failures and then moving on the downside. So again, back to the NASDAQ, this all compares to the same thing we showed in here. This declining phase out over here into the late summer or early fall. These resistances over here that we're talking about, maybe another few weeks before this minor decline takes hold over here, then maybe another little rally, and then another big sell-off over here. There would normally be, uh, I don't have any of the yellow, really risky periods of risk, uh, but that really comes out over here uh, into maybe sometime uh, around the beginning of August out into early October. That's where the really risky period is, uh, where those nested lows are in all of the indexes, as you could see us pointing to right over here. That low right over there at the 11,450 something, uh, the, it's destined to be taken out and maybe in a significant way. Of course, nothing is written in stone, but these are the highest probabilities. I wanted to show you that uh, when we look at that. Now, we talked about this rebound in here in the stock market and uh, that we said the shortest term indicators would then tell us that it was going on. I want to show you the S Slim market monitor right here uh, and uh, this is for level four members it's got four proprietary uh, indicators on there uh, and you can see in here uh, the uh, spy qqq iwm the dow jones industrials the dow jones transportation average the shortest term and most sensitive indicator is the reversal scout and that turned green you might even get the slim ribbon to turn green in here actually IWM has already turned neutral, and that's the best pattern of the short-term patterns. But the OBI, that's going to be really tough to term. And also the MCI, which is heavily weighted by longer term, uh, uh, the longer term uh, uh, variables that we put in there. Uh, and you can see in here the IWM, it's at minus 20. That's actually the best one. So uh, IWM has the best short-term pattern. I wanted to show you that we talked about what would happen and that the shortest term reversal scout would turn positive when we thought the correction was uh, on the upside was on this upside correction 
is on, as we show you that in the NASDAQ. So that is a look at the stock market. Um, as you can see, the, the uh, heavyweights in there are super supportive of the analysis that says that it's got some more room on the upside. You're likely to get some rallies up to those levels that we talked about. But then it is very, very likely uh, that there is a big decline to follow. Uh, and if you think that there's been uh, wipeouts in a lot of these stocks, uh, I think the rebounds are only going to set up additional wipeouts on the downside on a lot of these stocks. So uh, that is a look at the stock market with the focus on the NASDAQ. So I hope that you found that illuminating.